So just one last follow-up on that. What do you think the impact would be of taking, of not participating in state-mandated programs? The the only way to change Albany, the only way to change any upper level government is to change it at the lower level. And the sooner people realize and the sooner that local governments stand up and say, this program, while based on a good idea, may not necessarily, it may benefit you, assembly person or senator from the district that you come in, but let's look, I mean, St. Lawrence County and Nassau County are two totally separate worlds. So a program that would benefit Nassau County doesn't, may not benefit St. Lawrence County. So the only way that upper level government is going to get better management is, is Albany's a broadsword, we're a scalpel. They put a generalized program out there, it's out to the local governments to make it more definitive to best maximize the use of that program to fit their specific needs. So would you suggest that you take a program that's mandated and doesn't seem to fit a rural county and suggest a, a different way of doing it, a pilot that, that because of it, state mandates are, are usually associated with money that comes from the state so that by not participating in the mandate you do not get the, the state monies. Well, now we're talking about two, two different breeds of evils, mandateds that come from the state and come with state money and unfunded mandates. So the, un, the unfunded mandates that the state say you have to do this program but you have to pay for it, there, there's where the problem in lies. If you've got a program that they tell you that you have to do that does absolutely nothing and you have to pay for it, well, if Albany isn't paying for it, we are that's where the problem in lies and those are the programs that you have to go after is the ones the ones that they tell us we have to do and we have to pay for but they don't realize that it doesn't do anything for us. Mm -hmm. um, another uh, obviously uh, major uh, issue is, is job mm -hmm. and, and I was wondering what you would say to uh, a high school you know, senior say from Madrid who said, you know, that he or she was going to have to leave St. Lawrence because she just didn't see any future uh, here uh, in terms of being able to get a job. What would you, you say that you were going to try to do to change that? You're talking to a person that left the area, learned life experience, and then came back and brought his, his experience with him. And it, let, let's face it, it Th this is the way it is. Yes, it is nice to have them stay there, and yes, it is great to have um, opportunities here. But what I would say to somebody is, you know, right now, I agree with you. You're probably going to have to leave. But in the meantime, you know, I'm, I th these things aren't going to happen overnight. I can't sit here today and say to the graduating class of 2010, hang in there because there's going to be a job for you. Again, can't make that promise. That's another political lie. Will not do it. If I said to somebody, you know, like I, w I went away, I left the area, I learned about real estate, I learned about banking, I brought my skills back, and I created a business in the area, which is again turned into another business. I started a real estate business, it blossomed into an agricultural operation. Sometimes this has to happen, and let's face it, I mean, kids leave home and, and kids go. My goal as a legislator is to start reaching out to these companies, start facilitating. If you've got a company coming into the area, we've got an IDA, we've got an EDA, that's fine. Those people are supposed to help facilitate with the financing and everything like that. My job as an elected official is to go in and say, what do you need? What are your obstructions? You know, what, you know, what, are, the, what are the things that are uh, impeding you from coming to our area? You know, what can I do to run blocker for you? Um, 
just to, to, since you, you mentioned the IDA, uh, the uh, legislature uh, has a representative on the IDA. Um, what would you, you know, would you be interested, first of all, in perhaps being that person uh, at some point? Um, or uh, what would you, um, you know, advise that, that person to be pursuing in terms of, um, you know, development? And also at the moment, uh, there is the uh, River Valley Redevelopment Authority has $60 million from, from NIPA that is going to be, you know, distributed, used in, for various uh, purposes you know, in our area. And, um, you know, are there any specific things, in other words, that you think that uh, the development authority should be pursuing? It, there's a lot of things that they should be doing. I mean, we have a major military base 60 miles away. We have a light industrial park in Ogdensburg that's <coughs> housed electronics repair facilities. They should be going down to Fort Drum and saying, who are your electronic suppliers? Who, you know, who has anything to do with this? You, you, all those, these products are manufactured elsewhere. We have a perfect place close by with a facility set up and people already trained in the repair of electronic equipment. So can I get a list of your suppliers so that we can reach out to these companies and maybe set up a repair facility? Um, one, of the, one of the things that I, I keep looking at is they, they keep trying to bag the elk. They keep trying to go out and, you know, we're going to bring in a company with 150 or 200 jobs and they're good paying. I don't care. I, what's the difference between one company with 150 jobs that could leave and leave 150 people unemployed or one building broken into 10 sections that employs 15, 20 people? Let's face it, businesses start up, businesses go. That's the cycle of life in the business world. But if you have all these small businesses here, some die, some thrive. The biggest thing is when one dies, the chances of the one that's thriving picking up the people that are in a related business in the related area, you've got a much better chance with numerous small businesses of success than you do with one grandiose business that might be great today but might be eliminated by technology tomorrow. can't tell you how thrilled I am to hear that because I'm a big supporter of a distributed small business growth as an engine for economic development. <clears throat> Yet in, traditionally the IDA and, and, and in the past the Economic Development Department, which has now been subsumed by the IDA, uh, has been looking for the, trying to bag the elk as you said. Uh, what is it that the Board of Legislators can do to turn that trend around? Because the Chamber of Commerce has set a pretty good example. They've looked uh, in some ways they've never seen a project they didn't like, but they've looked at all the small projects as well and really supported a lot of them. And so the, the things like the, the local uh, craft cooperative and, and, and small small businesses have really uh, been helped by the Chamber of Commerce, but they've not had traditional support from the IDA. What, what could you do? To, what would you see the role of the legislature, your role as a, as a legislator in, in addressing that? <sighs> Sometimes you have to work within the box, sometimes you have to work outside the box. Although the legislature only meets one night a week, as far as I'm concerned, being a legislator is a full-time job. And being a self-employed real estate broker and stuff, I'm not going to go out and step over or step on the toes of anybody else in these agencies. However, my due diligence makes me say, okay, while these guys are doing this, I'm going to do that. And then the more information I compile, I can pass it out to other legislators or I can pass it on to the IDA and say, okay, here's a list of companies, start working with them. And, you know, here's, a, here's somebody else involved. Here's another list of companies. You start the facilitation. And then when these people that run these companies start looking at, well, gee, I got a call from an IDA, I got a letter from a legislator, now I've gotten a response from another legislator, these people are hungry, and the elected officials are working just as hard as the development agencies to do that. So you, you have to work as a body. Government has to work together but you also have to be independent to the point where you are going to go out on your own and reach out to these companies and say, you know, we're, we're looking at this and I'm an elected official and I'd like to help bring you in. Are you interested? Yes. Okay, fine. 
I'll, I'll work with you as liaison with our industrial development agency and economic development. I will be a facilitator there the whole time. But your job is to work, work hard, and work both within the box and outside the box. Um, certainly one 